Welcome to live stream number 184. It is Thursday, July 5th, Sep September, July 5th, 2018. Clock is ticking up there. If you're watching the recording, I will definitely not blame you for fast forwarding. But today's topic is something that I think everybody should get a little bit excited about. And uh, that is 80-20 roller wheels, how to mount them to a rail. And then we're gonna get into something that we have never touched on in the live stream before, what is a motion study. I'm just a little bit early here. Just wanna give you a chance to uh, jump in here. I can see that Darren is already here. Absolutely appreciate it, Darren. Um, anybody in the US, absolutely uh, hope you had a great 4th of July, what we were celebrating yesterday. Um, yeah, today we're gonna get into some more of this 80-20 stuff. I think there's something in here for anybody. So this should be a good one. Um, with these, I'm kind of catching up on the on previous ones. But we're gonna get going just in a, in, in a couple of minutes here. Just wanna give you a chance to come in. Uh, I can see that we got Peter here, Bernie's here. Absolutely uh, appreciate that you guys are taking the time. So we are on YouTube and we are on Facebook. Love it. For both of you, thank you so much. And again, if you're watching the recording, absolutely uh, appreciate it. Um, we'll get going here as soon as we get to, to, to the zero. Now, if I do a good job today, I, I think if I do it, and you let me know, so there is one, two, three, there's four different ways that you can express your opinion about these live streams. And I encourage you to uh, speak your voice. Um, you can like it, you can dislike it, and absolutely do that. Um, any comment, absolutely love the comments. And uh, then, of course, subscribe if you haven't already to the YouTube channel, uh, and you can follow uh, the Facebook page. That's the way that you can express if you like this or not. You are the judge um, and the jury, or whatever. Uh, so that's all good. Um, what should I tell you? Tomorrow is CAM. If you are into uh, CAM Fusion 360, I think you need to see tomorrow. I think we're gonna do five things you need to know about CAM. Next week, I will be traveling. Uh, I am going to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'm going to uh, Detroit next week. So uh, we'll not be on then. All right, I can see we got people on here. We got Jay is on in uh, Facebook. Ismail is on in Facebook, absolutely uh, absolutely appreciate it. And over on the YouTube, we are building up uh, with a nice, nice group over there. Uh, Dan, Ernst, David, absolutely appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, yes, so with uh, six seconds left, hope you guys had a good fourth. Let me just get rid of, uh, of the clock and we should be going right on top of the hour. Hey everybody, and welcome to live stream number 184. My name is Lars Christensen, and this is just trying to add a little bit more value to your Fusion 360 experience. You let me know if this is good, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't, please be honest. And you know, it means the world to me. Today we're gonna talk about, we're gonna jump back and talk a little bit about the 80-20 uh, topic. We've covered that before. I left two times before. There's links down in the description area. So we're kind of like building a little bit uh, on it, I think. Um, we're gonna do a couple of interesting things today. We are going to, first of all, uh, so there should be something for everybody. Uh, we are going to place uh, one of these uh, roller wheels on a rail so it can uh, go back and forth. Uh, that is one of the requests that I've gotten that was not covered in the other one. Um, then we're going to talk about limit. Uh, oops, if you hold down the mouse cursor too long. We're going to talk about limits. So you will see there is a limit on this joint, but there's actually also a, uh, a contact set because there is a stop in, uh, in the other end here. So that is two different ways to uh, kind of control where this one goes. Now the key uh, with this is that you can actually also with this create what is called a motion study. And we're gonna do that today. And it looks somewhat like this. 
And if I hit the play button, and this button here, you will see that the roller is going to go back and forth uh, a, uh, a certain distance. And we're going to wrap all that up with a nice bow. Uh, and I'll show you how you can do something uh, like this. Might show up a jumping a little bit. This is, <laughs> this is not my best render work ever. Uh, I do have a little bit of limited time preparing for these live streams. Uh, but you get the idea. Um, having something that is rendered um, but also uh, with uh, motion in. So we're gonna, we're not gonna get 100% in depth of these of of, uh, of the motion study, but that's something we will touch on later. This is just kind of like a little, uh, you know, it's like the burger, and we added a little bit mayonnaise and pickles and stuff with the motion studies just to try to make it a little bit more delicious and uh, give you a little bit of insight to that. So that's what we're gonna cover today. I hope this is useful. If you right, be honest. Okay, let's get into it. So I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna move, open up a new document because we don't want to do any uh, cooking show here where we're pulling the dish out of the oven uh, already baked. And uh, I'm gonna start out by going to uh, the insert and insert McMaster car. If this is brand new to you, um, then go down and check out the other live streams um, that I have done uh, because I kind of cover some of these things and. Uh, I want to keep this uh, as short as possible. Um, but what we can do, of course, in here is we can search for uh, any, any 80, 20 content that McMaster have. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff in here, including uh, these track rollers we're going to use today. Um, and this comes because after my last live stream on this topic, a few people uh, emailed me, emailed down in the description area of this video and expressed um, some some questions about how do you insert something like this so well that's what we're going to do today i'm going to grab um this roller uh here the bottom metric one click on that click on product detail and uh, if we scroll down we will see down here we can get the step file that's what i like step hit save and uh, that is now brought into our open new file here I'm gonna hit okay to this. I'm not gonna move it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, and the only thing I wanna do to this one, just because I think it makes it a little bit easier, maybe visualizing, because anything you're bringing in is, uh, well, this is, this is a, now we're in an assembly, right? This kind of covers to what we talked about uh, Tuesday. Uh, so this is, a, this is a component with a lot of bodies in it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and say appearances. I just wanna change how it looks. And uh, I'm going to go into metal, aluminum, and I'm going to drag on a red kind of anodized on this. And uh, then the wheels are probably nylon, so we're going to go into like a plastic. And I'm going to grab a little bit of black there, okay? So uh, that is just to kind of like identify it a little bit easier. Now we have uh, the rollers. Now I'm going to go in and, uh, and grab a, another McMaster, and this time we're going to grab a rail. So I'm going to click here, 80 there's 20 and I'm just going to select a solid solid rail um, and uh, I know that the ones I have here is uh, is an eight millimeter um, T slot so I'm going to click on that and um, in my previous live streams when we talked about these I was talking about um, I'm just going to select a two feet long one here that is not important I was talking about how you could actually create libraries uh, of these rails if you're using them on a continuously basis that is definitely what I would recommend now I'm gonna hit okay to this and you will see that it comes in definitely not uh, in in the right spot uh, where we want it um, and that was kind of done on purpose because we need to join these together and that's <laughs> that's part of this live stream is how do we get this 80 20 roller onto this one and be the right place um, so I, I talked in a previous live stream, definitely make libraries, so check that out. Now I'm gonna decide that the rail is stationary. That is already in place. So I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna ground that. So that is now not gonna move. And I'm also just for, for my fun, I'm gonna change the appearance to that to an aluminum blue, because that's what I like. So what we have now is this rail and we have uh, this roller that we of course wanna place on this rail, wherever it's gonna, whatever it's kind of gonna go. We're gonna do that, and I, and I talked about this in another live stream, but I didn't use a roller, so 
uh, watch the other one and, and you get to kind of get it twice. We're going to use this joint origin for that. Um, I compare this a little bit to um, to a Pac-Man or a little coin that we're going to we're going to match up our joints with. And um, and I'm going to show you a couple of different tricks with this. So I'm going to get joint origin, and uh, I'm going to place. Um, Actually, so probably the best habit would be go and make the roller active if you're gonna do this. So I'm gonna select a joint origin, and uh, you will see the coin appears uh, wherever I kind of uh, go. Now, so you want to place this coin where it makes sense. So where it makes sense in our case is this size of the nylon wheel will fit inside of the T slot on the rail. And these will rest uh, on top of the rail. So we want to end up with our coin being in the center right around here. Okay, that's where we're going. That's what we're going for. So, joint origin. And I'm going to start out by snapping to the center of this one. And you will see that if I hover over different edges, it's actually going to show different um, areas and if I hold down the control I can actually go in here and uh, it is now locked down to this phase but it gives me the three constraints on that what is center of that face or in each end that is kind of like the same as clicking right here this end or this end and then if I hover over here hold down the control I can snap to right here okay so now I place the coin right here now I'm going to say OK for a second and come back to this menu. I'm going to hit OK. What I now have gotten is I've gotten the coin sitting in the center of, uh, of this one right in here. But the coin is facing this way out. I don't want the coin to face this way out. I want it to face this way. See how it becomes paper thin? I want to rotate it 90 degrees. And... We're going to do that. And then lastly, I want to place it down here. Now, I'm going to do a lot of steps right now because I want to kind of break it down for you. So I'm going to go back in and edit it again. Normally, I would have done all this in one operation. So before you, uh, before you comment that this was many steps, just understand that I'm, I'm taking some more dance steps and hopefully making it better. So we are back into where I just placed it. Down here you have a reorient. I'm going to click on that and then I can select a Z axis. And now I can use this face as a reference so it will go perpendicular to that face. And now if I click on that face here, look at the coin, see how it switches over? I click on here, hit OK. Now I've rotated the coin. Now the coin is perfect there. Ah, we're getting somewhere. Um, but I still need it to be right down here. So, my last time I'm going to go in and edit this one. Well, before I do that, actually, you want to see a cool trick? Um, I want this one to be moved down the radius of this. Do you know what the radius of this is? Do you know now? <laughs> I'm just trying to be funny. Maybe it's not funny. If you click on a face, and a circular face, look what it does down here in the lower right. Shows you the radius. Huh, that's a fairly new function. So I click here, I know that I gotta go that one down 21.5 millimeters. So, last time I'm gonna go in and edit this one. Right click, edit origin. And I'm just gonna drag it down that minus 21.5. Hit enter. So I did this in many steps, but I just got what I needed. I got a coin sitting right down here parallel to this. Now, I just need another coin. And this is where I'm talking about like libraries. I would save this part out. If I know I'm going to use this one again, I would save it out as a file. And then I can always bring it in with that origin in it. Same thing goes for uh, the rail down here. That if I, um, if, if I was going to use these on a regular basis, I would save the coin so I never had to do it again. Again, if you've got to measure distances. So now we want one between the slot. Check this out. Measure, I'm going to select this edge here, this edge here, 9.25. That also shows up over here. Now, I can't remember what I had for dinner last night. I can't remember anything. Well, did you know you can just click and it will clip it to the uh, 
clipboard. So click on that and it will remember that number. So now when I go in and say a add on a joint origin, I'm going to select right over here. See how many options we get over here. I'm just going to make sure it snaps right to there. And uh, then I can drag it back and forth here. So now I can go to my offset, do a control V because it remembered that number in there. It's going to be a minus number though. And uh, do a minus two. There is that coin there. So I hope this somewhat makes sense. Um, just my attempt to kind of like show you uh, a couple of different ways. Let's go up and activate the top component up here. And now it's just a straightforward joint, right? Click joint. I'm going to select the coin here. I'm going to select the coin here. It's going to snap right over to it. You can flip the direction that you want it to be. So I'm going to flip it. And uh, the difference between mates and joints is that mates, you are removing one degree of freedom. Joints, you are fixing six degrees of freedom and then you're letting go. So right now this is rigid, but if I change that to a slider, look at this. Now it is, uh, now it is sliding. So we now have this. And if we go in and look at it from a normal perspective, you will see that this is sitting right flush here. That is sitting right in the center. Uh, there is exit clearance on these uh, models, which is kind of cool because you probably want that. Um, but this is how you insert a wheel into uh, a rail. And somebody asking me, well, wait a minute, that wheel is not spinning. That is true, friends. Uh, it is not. And, um, you know, Fusion is not an animation software. It is a mechanical software. And I would absolutely never, ever try to do that. I just don't think that that is, uh, uh, that is way too much to, to put on this. Okay. So now we can do this, but you can see it can also uh, do this motion and get off. And I'm going to show you two different ways to kind of control that. One is joint limits. And I've gotten some questions about that. So um, hopefully today um, I answer some of those. Hopefully those people will watch these live streams. <laughs> if not, then uh, they are 100% out of luck. Um, so... There's two ways you can do this. One is using joint limits. Now, what you got to do is over here in the folder, you got joints. Click to expand it. Here is that joint we just placed. Now, right click on it and say edit joint limits. And you get this little dialogue here. Okay. You can do minimum and maximum. But I'm going to show you a little trick about this because it might be a little bit confusing to you. So let's turn on a minimum. And uh, that is zero uh, millimeters. And let's turn on the maximum. And let's make that 50 millimeters. Okay. Now, when I turn that 50 millimeters, you will see that uh, it's, it jumped over here off our rail. You can click the little animate button. And you will see it animates. And you will see that now where we had this 50 in here, that zero didn't become where I had it but became where those, those uh, two coins met, okay? Now here is, is the little trick that you need to know. Um, and um, that is that if we are doing normal CAD, we might think, oh, uh, inside of Fusion, we're just gonna make this value negative to get it to go 50 the other way. And yes, you will see that it goes 50 the other way. But notice how the minimum also became 50. And you're like, well, wait a minute, that should have stayed zero. So then you go up here, if you're like me, and you say, well, I'm gonna make this zero. But then when you do that, the maximum becomes zero. And that's when you're like, what? And uh, you know, you email Lars, and you're like, why? It, the reason is that it would be weird that minimum could be higher than maximum. It just, I guess that doesn't make any sense. So you just always have to have minimum to be smaller than, than, than the maximum, <clears throat> okay? So first of all, if you're looking at where it's placed right now at zero, zero, um, it's right on the edge where it's gonna fall off. And that's actually not uh, probably great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the, the maximum 
to minus 10. That's going to move the minimum to minus 10 also, as we just discovered. But now, because I'm going to go high, I'm going to go minimum of the maximum, I can go 550, and you will now see, or minus, minus five, see, I just made a mistake, minus, minus 10, <laughs> I forgot the minus. Now I have the minus 50, minus 10, minus 50, now we have that, that movement there that we are looking for. So just always remember that if you have to make this minus, if you have to go on the other side, then uh, minimum also has to be smaller than, uh, than, than maximum. That's the trick. <clears throat> I hope that I didn't make this confusing. So this is all great. All right, now we have this limit. I'm going to do something. I'll go higher than eight, uh, 550. I'm going to go 800 just to show the next step and, uh, and hit OK. So now what we have is we have a limit made on this one. Drag this one down. Boom, I can't move my mouse any further. Move this way here till it comes to 800 and my, I can't move it further. So now I have this movement here. That is the first way that you can control this. And of course we could make a mesh measurement and we could use the limit made on the other end. The other option is to use enable contact sets. And this is another extremely powerful thing. What I'm gonna do is I am going to, uh, I'm gonna start a new component. Right click, new component down here. Open up a sketch on the back face of this rail. And I'm just gonna draw a box. It's gonna make it bigger than anything. And uh, I am going to do coincident between this edge and this edge on the, on the roller here. Oh, no, I want to do collinear between here and this line. I'm going to make collinear from here to here, to here, to here. Whoa, hey, what the heck? Collinear, this line to this edge. Better listen. This adds to this edge. And then I'm going to do the last one. I'm going to make that collinear not to the rail, but to our part over here. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to extrude that component out. Boom, boom, boom. Select all these different sections in here. I'm just making a block. Okay, and uh, that should actually also be made it. Right now, I'm just going to ground it so it sits here on the rail. Now, so right now, what I've done was I just create a little block. If you watch. Tuesday's live stream should feel better about this, but of course this happens. See this here. Now we have the limit up here. The other one could go 800 to about there. So now we can go in and say enable contact sets, right click, new contact sets. I'm going to select the two components that's going to collide. So this little block we just created and this one hit OK. Now, there we have our limit, but now we have our contact sets right here. See that? That is two different ways that you can control the movement of this one. Now, there is always um, a catch, a caviar or something. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> great power, great responsibilities, friends. That is, uh, it's getting warm in my office. That is, um, that is important to, uh, to understand here, that there is, there is a catch. Catch is that when you do uh, the limit mates, then of course it's constrained on that coin and that limit you put together. If you do the contact sets, then you are putting some constraint on your computer. And what I mean by that is, um, Fusion is a solid model, right? So it's constantly keeping track of things. And that means that every time you're moving the component, the software is constantly on guard to make sure that it doesn't hit anything. So if you have like a big assembly, uh, then uh, contact sets can be, they can be draining on your software. But I wanted to show you two different ways to control uh, this uh, movement. Now with that uh, in here, and uh, again, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave comments, any questions, 
and uh, we'll, we'll tackle those. But with this done here, hopefully that answered a bunch of questions. I wanted to introduce something else. Move this to space here. That is um, this motion study down here. Um, and we're going to get in and, and I'm going to show more about this later on in another live stream. But this is a perfect uh, kind of give you a little taste of this. This is part of the today's dinner dish, um, a little side. So I'm going to click motion study and you get this window up here. This all has to have joints. So you have to have joints in here. This is all driven per joints. And we have one, right? When I click on that, when I click on that joint, you'll see we get a purple line down here. Now, if you ever done the animation steps over here, it somewhat works in the same order that you have a bar that moves back and forth, and that is counted down here in not in seconds, but in steps. It's a little bit different. But what we can do is we can insert a value by clicking on this joint line, and I can set some kind of a value. So on step 18, 80, sorry, I'm going to put minus 550. Remember, that was that first value I had. I'm going to click enter. And when I do that, you will see that that moves down to here. Now, if I hit the play button, you will see that this joint actually starts from wherever we were when I started it. So this is different than when we when we did this, this slider joint. That would start from where the two coins were together. This one starts from wherever you you are, okay? So that was what I wanted to try to show you there. It was where I had left go on this one. That's where this motion started start, what is, what is kind of cool uh, in effect. Now, um, over here, you kind of get a table of all the different joints you are creating. You can at any time close it, remove it. Now we're back to where there's nothing. It means that if I cancel out of this, I can now... If I want to get the full movement of this, I can move it back to where our two joints are. Click on motion study again. So now when I click on the joint now, then it will be from this location. Hope that makes sense. Click on 80 again, minus 550. Hit enter and it's going to be down there. And now when I hit play, it's going to stop there. Hit play again. Okay. Now, you can have some buttons down here. You can either go back stepwise, each step, each second, whatever you want to call that. You can go all the way back. You can go forward each step, or you can play it to the end. Then you get a couple of buttons here. You can go one way. That's what we've been doing so far. One way stop, one way stop. The next one is one way forward, one way back. So that starts with sampling the motion. And then you can do the last one, what is the loop, but just means it's going to go forward and forward and forward and forward and forward. <laughs> you get it. This is probably actually what we want. You can control the speed here about how fast you will go back and forth. And that is the motion study in its easiness. But you can, of course, add more joints, uh, do different things, rotations and you know, all these kind of things. But now we have a motion started folder over here. And that means that, of course, we have the movable joints in our modeling environment right here. Um, but then we also get this very cool option that you're standing in front of a customer and you're saying, well, you will go into the motion study, right click, hit edit, set it to go back and forth. And you can and speed down a little bit, hit play. And you can now talk to the customer about how this will go, go back and forth. Of course, you can add multiple movements in here. So this is very basic, but that's like how I like to, to serve up new functions. Um, so this is really cool. Now, this gets a little bit better. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, you can render this out. So I showed that in the beginning. If you came a little bit late, here is uh, this rendered out. Now, I did it um, on the roughest setting because I only have a little bit of time to prepare for these. Um, but just to show you how this works. So this looks pretty good right now. We have a rendered environment and this goes back to our rendering video we did the other day. Um, so you could go in here, model, and uh, you go into the render environment. And we talked last week about Monday, I think the last 
look back to the last couple of live streams we talked about um, about rendering. I can't remember when it was. Um, we talked about all setting this up. Um, now, the, there's a couple of important things to know. If you gotta do the motion render, is that when you render this, you gotta save your design first. When you render this, oh, come on, just hurry up. <laughs> I don't have time for this. You need to use cloud render for this. That means that's gonna cost you credits. Now, when you install Fusion, you already have credits uh, in there and you can buy them all. Credits depend. So here I'm on, on, on final, the best quality, it costs you two credits, so $2, about $2, I think. If you click on standard, it that was what I did, uh, the video you just saw, I did that in standard. Then it will be one credit. Of course, you can control the size you want to render this out in. Um, so you have to render that out. So it's going to cost you, in this case, you have $1 uh, to render that out. That takes 15, 10, 15 minutes. Um, you could also, if you just wanted a, a picture, then you could just, of course, do it local. And then it doesn't cost you anything. But if you need the motion in there, then you have to do it as a cloud render. One or two dollars, depending on the quality you want. When you've done that, I'm going to go back to this model here. Uh, when you've done that, then, hang on, then you get an image like this. And if I, you click on that, then you will get an option you normally don't see. You have to have a, a motion study to be able to get this, this button. You click on this $1 rendering. And now it would let you render it out as a movie. Now that is also gonna cost you credit. So make sure you have, so go make sure you go in and look at this image first, right? And make sure that it looks good. And then um, you can go in here and this also, the amount it's gonna cost you depends on the quality. So if you go final, the best quality, it was 62 cloud credits, but also size you need. So I'm actually 12, um, 1080, 1920 by 1080s, uh, so 1080p, if you go smaller, then it becomes less 15 cloud credits. So you can get as low as seven cloud credits, uh, but that will then render out um, that kind of image you saw me playing in with in here. Uh, now, what I did do in, what I did do on this one uh, was that I did our little trick from the other day uh, because if you ever do any renderings you know that this, this background can look a little wishy-washy or <laughs> whatever you call it so I did do what we talked about uh, last time in the rendering was was I had created that background and I laid it within that background here right I brought it in and the only thing you have to make sure when you do, if you do this, and this would make more sense if you're watching the rendering um, uh, live stream, make sure your contact sets and your motion study is on top. It's gotta be in the upper level of the assembly that you're rendering out. So here is actually the role I brought in. Uh, and the way I just modeled up the first part, that would have been the, the motion study would have been in here. Um, but I brought that into to the top one. But that is how that you can get um, something like this. Um, and like I said, I have very limited time I can prepare for these live streams because I got other things to do. So uh, that is why maybe this is not, for some of you guys, this is not really um, that impressive. But, just uh, wipe the sweat off a little bit here before I get back on camera. It is, um, it is about 95 degrees in here now. I need to get, this is when we gotta end the live streams. <laughs> um, what is that? 35 Celsius. Um, that, friends, was what I plan on showing today. I hope this was useful. Um, as always, thumbs up if you like this. It means the world to me. Thumbs down if you don't. That means the world to me too. I want the feedback from you guys. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, I really appreciate that. Or follow it on the Facebook. Guys, absolutely awesome. 130 people in the in the YouTube, I'm not quite sure how many in the Facebook, but really appreciate it. Also, of course, if you're watching the recording, thank you. You guys are the best. Tomorrow is Cam. Five things you need to know about Cam inside of Fusion 360. You might don't want to miss that one. 
Until then, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.